Hello folks, I'm Odin Spack, and welcome back to 33 years and counting of my favorite games. This is part 23, the year 2000. We are at the beginning of the millennium. And boy, if you thought last time there was a lot of honorable mentions mentioned real quick, you haven't even, you haven't even thought about the year 2000. So many things to talk about that we're going to talk about real fast. I will say quickly though, before we talk about that, this list, as we start getting to the older stuff, is based off of a list I made when I was originally planning some sort of other video series. I was going to be like a, it was going to be documentary styled, and so a lot of my like favorite games that I was going to talk about kind of like carried its way into the formation of this list to make things easier for myself. So I'd have to do a little less research. So that's why there's like a lot more to talk about in the past is because I, I, I did research this, these earlier years a, a little more, but also there is a lot more games. I am just more nostalgic for, which I know is a, is a big thing in this list. I feel like I've said that a bunch. Nostalgia really does play a, a big part in like games. I like, I don't know. Just how I'm wired, I guess. But uh, I do just like a lot of games from this era and previous. The 90s are like, that's my jam uh, when it comes to a lot of video games. And 2000 is just the tail end of that. So there's actually a lot to talk about. So I'm going to quickly rapid fire these as fast as I can. So honorable mentions, starting now. Kirby 64, the Crystal Shards for the N64. Uh I did a Let's Play this game. Uh, I think it's one of the better Kirby titles in, in the fact that it's unique um, among the uh, Kirby titles. Uh, they were still a little more, uh, more experimental with them, but uh, it's a solid playthrough. It's not a long playthrough. It's just a, a fun one, and the mini games, you know, are are really neat. You know, they're they're not there's not many of them. You know, you're not gonna gather a bunch of friends around and play checkerboard chase for a while, or will you? <laughs> but I mean, it's a pretty good mini game. So that's a good one to have on NSO on NSO online. That's redundant. NSO Nintendo Switch Online. Uh, Mario Party Two uh, for the N sixty four. Also, just the, one of my favorite Mario Party games, just in general. It's the one they've re re released a whole bunch of times uh, on other things that aren't the N sixty four. If I would have said this before they announced that Mario Parties One and Three were coming to NSO, then this, this may have held a little more weight, but. Uh, it's it's just an enjoyable game. Uh, it improves on things that were weak in the first game. Not everything's an improvement, I don't feel, but uh, there's the item system is... I, I, I think I just like the one item system and two compa compared to the complicated item systems in later games. Uh, Perfect Dark would have been a top three contender if the remake didn't exist. Uh, or the yeah, I guess or the remaster didn't exist that we talked about uh, in 2011, where that was like my favorite game of that year. Or was that 2010? It's one of those years. I think it's 2010. Um, but I like I love Perfect Dark. Uh, like I said, it is my first favorite first person shooter. Um, but the 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 remaster is just so good that like I just I can't bring myself to like go back and play the N64 one anymore. So. You know, this is here just for a, this is like a, a history mention. I don't know. <laughs> this is like a Hall of Fame mention right here. Uh, Pokemon Gold and Silver, particularly sir, Silver. Uh, just one game I'm just like really nostalgic for when it comes to Pokemon. Uh, it, it really feels like a, a big part of my childhood when Gen 2 came out. Uh, just there was something about it that just kind of rewired how I thought about Pokemon. Uh, after playing Red and Blue, I just understood it a lot more. So it it was a really fun experience, and it took me until like <laughs> not that many years ago that I beat it for the first time. I know it sounds crazy, but I put a lot of time into it, and I just never finished the game. Uh, I, well, at least like the the uh, the Kanto section anyway. So I eventually did that. <laughs> um, Pokemon Stadium. There's not much to say here other than I really enjoyed the mini games of it, and uh, Gym Leader Castle was awesome. Um, I, like I really enjoyed the Gym Leader Castle mode. Uh, definitely, like the the Pokemon Stadium part is like okay in the in the game called Pokemon Stadium, but Gym Leader Castle is just such a sweet mode, and the music's just awesome. Uh, so, and you know, you get to see your Pokemon in 3D. I love all the animations. Uh, RPG Maker <laughs> 2000 slash 2003. I don't even know if this is a proper place to put. I mean, obviously 2003 is would have been later, but I'm putting 2000 here. 
I don't know when this was officially localized. I I think technically it was on Steam like years later, but I I I was using some unofficial localized one like many of us were back in the day. Um, and just having an absolute blast creating my own game. So this is kind of a weird one to put because it's kind of a game creation tool as opposed to a game, uh, but it's just getting an honorable mention anyway. Uh, just a big part of my middle school years uh, learning how to make games with it, and I had an absolute blast doing it. I wish I had the same kind of <laughs> the same kind of passion that I did to combine with my creativity today. Uh, if I had that, then I, I would I would have some great games out right now. Uh, Seiken Densetsu 3, also known as Trials of Mana, uh, released for the SNES. Now, this game originally came out in 1995, uh, but I first played it through the ROM hack translation that came out in 2000. So that's that's why I'm counting this. I think this is the first. No, no, Mother 3 popped up on here already. We already we already dealt with this. We already dealt with this technicality. Um, this is when it was translated unofficially in North America. Um, if 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 I were to put this in 95, it might have a greater shot for top three. Honestly, of all the games that I've said so far, this this was like this was like neck and neck for what's going to be number three. So like this could have been a top three easily, but I love Trials of Mana uh, more than Secret of Mana. Even I like I love that game too. Don't get me wrong, but I I just think the like how you get to choose uh, your own party of from, like, six characters that all have their own stories, and you, like, you know, you get to learn how each of the characters uh, interact with each other, the different, like, plots that they have and stuff. Like, it's a really unique experience. There's, there's tons of replayability here. I've beat it a few times, um... But uh, uh, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> I've I've even beaten the the official one on Super Famicom, not translated. <laughs> I've, I've beaten it in Japanese um, with a guide. I had to use a guide to get through it, but I did do it because I love the game so much. So I did do that. So uh, the Sims, the original Sims on PC. Uh, this is another nostalgia pick here, but I had a, a blast playing this when it came out. Just such a unique game. That spawned, you know, a, a sensation. Uh, you know, people love the original Sims. I, it's adored to this day, uh, like the series itself. But you know, its humble beginnings were very good. Uh, you know, you look back at it now; it's actually just a solid game still. Like if you enjoy the sandbox style of uh, simulation games, you can just play this forever. <laughs> it's it's fun. And then uh, lastly, WWF No Mercy on the N64. Uh, this was a game that we rented, I feel like, a few times. I eventually would get... Uh, I remember having Royal Rumble matches that the only way you could get eliminated was, like, by pinfall or submission. Like, there was no throw... Like, like you could go outside the ring, you could go the, the back... Uh, the back areas and brawl, and it was Royal Rumble style. Like, I wish those kind of game modes still existed in wrestling games today. The fact that you could customize it that much, and it, and the game didn't like fall apart. Like it under, it understood the rules of it. Like, I, like an ultimate sandbox. I, I said sandbox last time in the Sims, but really an ultimate sandbox style of game for wrestling wrestling games, where you could just come up with a whole bunch of crazy uh, rule sets and and an insanely like detailed move editor like not editor but like all of all of your custom wrestlers you could like their move sets you could just you could alter every it was so dumb you could alter every different move punch grapple like like none of it so much of it really didn't matter but the fact that you could go into so much depth on an N64 game is just nuts. Unfortunately, the original version of the game has like this game-breaking bug. I don't know what triggers it, but like it just wipes your save data completely. Uh, and there's there's an updated version you had to mail in for it, and that version goes for like a ton now. And I didn't even know that was even a thing. So of course I have one of the you know not fixed versions, but there is a fix out there for No Mercy. People are still talking about it today. Today. Uh, it's a very beloved wrestling game. 
uh, and for good reason. It is a lot of fun. I mean, I'm thinking about this now. I want to do one of those Royal Rumble things right now. <laughs> What a fun game mode. I don't know how we came up with that. I guess shout-outs to my brother, probably, for coming up with that. I'm saying it again. If you have no mercy, Royal Rumble with with no 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 throw-out-the-ring eliminations, just pinfall submission, and you can and make it hard hardcore so you can fight anywhere. Like, you'll be there for, like, an hour or two, and you'll have a blast, especially if you're playing with other people. <laughs> All right. There's honorable mentions. We had a whole bunch of them. Let's go into my top three, starting with bronze medal, which I said was really neck and neck with Seekin Densetsu 3. Um, but it's going to go to Final Fantasy IX on the PlayStation 1. This was my first uh, PlayStation game, um, which is crazy because the PS2 was just like around the corner um, from when this came out. However, I'm pretty sure when I got this, uh, the PS2 was already out. So I got a PS1 when it was called the PS1, like the uh, the smaller white one uh, that, like, you know, you've probably seen the ones where they have, like, the screens attached to them. Mine doesn't have that, but it was, like, des they, like, designed it for that. I, I wish mine did. That would be awesome. But um, I don't have that PS1. Again, that would be cool, but I don't. Uh, but this was my first uh, PlayStation game. So it kind of holds a lot of memories for me. You know, before this, I was, I I played. I think I played my uncle's PlayStation. I played some Gran Turismo on that, which was that was a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong. Sorry, don't don't get me wrong. No editing. Um, <laughs> and I played. I you know I, I think I've I've told this story before where, we played like our cousin's PlayStation that was like modded, and I played like Final Fantasy VIII and like Breath of Fire three, um, not much of it. And I, when I got my PS1, I got a demo disc, and I played the heck out of the demo disc. You know, shout out to demo discs, by the way. Definitely something I think I should cover in the future because, man, demo discs are cool. <laughs> a product of, of my time that probably isn't a thing anymore, but I love demo discs. Uh, but when I got Final Fantasy IX, I was really excited. I didn't know what to expect from it. Um, I, I knew that it was like a classic styled Final Fantasy, like, oh, there's a thief, there's a knight, there's a black mage, white mage, there's a summoner, like, there's all that kind of, of classic job system that they have in Final Fantasies. I had not played, like I said, I did mention that I briefly played 8, but not much of it, like, it was barely anything, and I had not played 7, uh, so 9 was my first PS1, uh, Final Fantasy, and it was an absolute blast. I, I love the story of the game. I love that it takes, like, like the roots of it being classic, but that doesn't stop it from being a new entry. In, it's not like it relies on that. Like, the ability system of the game is completely unique to it. Uh, it's brand new. I don't know if a game has done it before. I know games have done it since. Uh, <laughs> Shoutouts to Tales of Vesperia. Um, but the ability system in it is, like, was like unique like it didn't borrow that from another final fantasy game um so like they didn't treat it like that like it's like this is a final fantasy game we're we're taking our classic roots but this is a it's a new story and everything it's just it just relies on nostalgia here and there and i think it's it excels well for that um the music in this game is fantastic not my favorite boss theme in the series i have to say um I don't know if that's a hot take. I just, I mean, it's just not my favorite boss theme. <laughs> it's all right. I'm hearing it right now in my head, of course. Uh, that's how that happens when you mention something. But uh, I have a really bad memory of this game. I, I know, shout outs to this, all these positive things I'm saying. But when I originally got this game, I think I bought it used. I must have. Because we got to the end of disc two, and you can't skip cutscenes in this game. And... Uh, there was like a cutscene. I think it's like a cutscene before the end of every disc, and it it wouldn't load, and so we could not progress the game because the disc was scratched, and it took us like weeks, I think, to eventually get it fixed, and that was like really dis a really disheartening experience, and I think that's the only time I've ever beaten that game beginning to end. I've since played it, um, but I've never finished it, and I don't know. I and I've never gotten past disc two ever again since that first time I, I got my PS1. So I just think that's really funny. So anyway, that's that's Final Fantasy IX. Uh, besides that really bad memory, 
But, you know, it happens. Uh, it's a game. Hey, this is, I might not know this. This is a little hidden feature, maybe. Uh, a couple of Final Fantasy games are actually multiplayer in battles. And this is actually one of them. Uh, to my knowledge, uh, five, five, six, and nine have that feature in the options menu. And then when they re-released four on the PlayStation One, not a recommended version to play, honestly, with the loading. However, it does have two-player Final Fantasy IV. So there you go. There's a little, there's a little tidbit for you. Did you know that? Is is it something you ever need to do? Probably not, but as someone who grew up with brothers who loved playing Final Fantasy, we use these features all the time. And I played a lot of Final Fantasy IX with my brother because it was our, you know, it was new. We were excited, so we bought a second controller to play Final Fantasy IX together. Like, how how silly is that, right? That's kind of silly. Um, all right, my uh, silver medal for the year 2000 is going to go to Pokemon Trading Card Game on the Game Boy Color. Uh, this might be my favorite Pokemon game, <laughs> period. <laughs> like, I know I've said Pokemon Ruby in the past few videos ago was, but I mean, like, that's like of mainline games. This just might be just of all Pokemon games. I might just like Pokemon trading card game the most. Um, and I mean, like, I don't know, a little hard, a little debate there, but it's the era of cards that I grew up with um, because it features the base jungle and fossil expansions with the promo there's and there's promo cards of car of like stuff that again was around at that time. So like all the cards in the game are like all the cards I grew up with. Um, and I mean, there's unique cards to the game as well, but I've, I've played the game so much that they may as well be rooted in my childhood as well. Um, I love the game. It's, it's a, uh, it's a ton of fun. The, the, the music's amazing. You can tackle it in any order you want, which is really neat. Well, kind of, kind of in any order you want. Like, te like technically you can, but there's like, you know, there's there's some limitations to that. But you really can fight most of the opponents in any order, which I think is a really unique feature of the game. So, um, if you like the trading card game, it's just that against AI. Um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, music's bopping. Said that already, but just a fun experience. So, trading card game. Didn't talk much on that, but there's not much to talk about. I love it. Uh, and then the final gold medal game for the year 2000 uh, is going to go to Diablo 2 on PC. Uh, now, there is an expansion, Lord of Destruction, that released in 2001, but I figured I should just put the original game for 2000. I mean, I, I'm not going to put Lord of Destruction for 2001 and Diablo 2 for 2000. That just seems ridiculous. Although a lot of the features in Lord of Destru uh, in Lord of Destruction probably I, I probably should have made it a 2001 game just cuz so many things that they add just make it so much better. Um but those things wouldn't be there without Diablo 2. So, uh I think it's fair just to say Diablo 2 is the option to go with uh just like the vanilla game. But uh this <laughs> I got to I got to be honest I played a demo of this game and I really liked it and my my grandpa is like look we're going to we're going to get you a a full version of the game if you know what I mean and uh we never could and then and then for christmas they bought it for me <laughs> they bought me Diablo 2 and then I was like yeah but the expansion's out now I need that <laughs> so I had to get the expansion as well um Man, Diablo 2, uh, you know, I I don't really I don't really play a lot of Blizzard stuff these days, you know. I I don't want to get into that. But um uh this this was a big part of my high school years, uh Diablo 2, uh and a little bit of post middle. Uh, I would say this was mostly a high school game, honestly. Like I did play it I think a little bit middle school, but this was mostly a high school game for me. Um I I I I just love this game. This is this is a top five for me, honestly. I'm not sure where in the top five, but it's not five. <laughs> uh, I feel like I've heard people say that a lot lately. Um, but uh, Diablo two, uh, you know, it's a it's a hack and I don't know if hack and slash is the right term. I think they say that it's like it's like a dungeon dungeon crawler. That's probably the best way to put it. It's a loot, you know. Uh, Hack and loot, I think they call them. 
I don't know. There's lots of descriptors. It's a top-down isometric game where you, you you fight enemies, you dodge stuff, and you collect treasure, and you upgrade your stats. It's an RPG. It's an action RPG. <laughs> there we go. Action RPG. That that sums up all every game. <laughs> but uh, Diablo 2 has just some really memorable moments for me. Some of the boss fights are really cool and epic, uh, even though a lot of it's just wailing on him over and over again but it's still good um and it's just some of the music even most of it is just atmospheric and chilling and like scary almost a bit but some of it's just plain beautiful the rogue encampment just like it's such a nostalgic tune for me but like it's also just really beautiful the Haragith theme which is from lord of destruction from 2001 so i don't know if i should if i should mention it but whatever i am um, just a, another beautiful piece. I'm pretty sure I've used that in a video before. Um, just it, it's a very nostalgic game for me. I love that all the different character classes give this game so much replayability. Um, I've beaten it many times, but I've never actually beaten it on its hardest difficulty. And I don't know if I just don't want to. Uh, which it's weird because the game doesn't really. The game progresses in a way where like when you when you reach the end of the first difficulty, it's not like it's not like you're you're upping the difficulty and then you're playing from the beginning again. It's like that character continues. So really this game is like three difficulties through the same game and I and I've never done that, which I feel like I'm probably missing out, but uh I I've definitely played through the nightmare difficulty a few times. Um so it, which is not the hardest. You think nightmare would be the hard, hardest? No, of course not. But um uh, Anyway, I Diablo 2 is just a, a a really fun game. It's eight player online, like ridiculous. Really fun to play with friends. Um, it's just it's just got it all for me. It's just a fun game where I can just kind of lay back and click on stuff and have a good time. And uh, it, it's again, it's just a huge nostalgia game for me that like nothing else could have been number one for me. All right, guys, that's gonna be it. Thank you so much for watching. Next time we're going back to the 90s with 99. So until then, I've been Odin Spack. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.